Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you. It's always good to be with you. Uh, I really hope and pray that as we focus for a few moments on God's word to us, that we will have a sense of, of God speaking to us today very personally. I think most of you know that we're on a journey here at Mosaic towards Easter, uh, towards Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and every week uh, we are looking at one word. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have got that guideline for Lent. And so far we've looked at two words. We looked at the word listening. Lent is all about listening. And last Sunday we looked at the word longing, that Lent is about longing. Today, we look at another very, very important word. Lent is also all about turning, turning. So what I want to do is just read to you a very brief passage from Scripture. It's from the Gospel of Mark. It comes in the first chapter. And this is the moment when Jesus begins his public ministry. This is the first sermon, and this is the first thing that he tells people to do, the very first thing that he tells people to do. And I want you to really tune in to this passage uh, very carefully today. It's Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. After John, that was John the uh, baptizer, after John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. Now, I want you to pay attention to what the good news is. He said, the time has come. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God. God's presence, God's power, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, turn, repent and believe the good news. And so we take those words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we put those words at the center of our worship today. We pray that God will speak very personally to each one of us. I don't know if you heard that uh, delightful story of that young, that young man who was studying to be a priest in the Catholic Church. And... Uh, he went through years of training, and eventually the moment came when he could take his very first service. Now, some of you may have worshipped within a Catholic church, and you, it's very interactive, it's very participative. You know, the priest says a few words to the minister, then the people respond. The minister says, may the peace of the Lord be with you. And then the minister, all the people respond and also with you. And so this young man walked to the podium uh, to, to begin the service. And there was something wrong with the, with the mic. And so he kept tapping it. And he looked towards the people at the sound desk and he said, there, there is something wrong with this mic. And all the people responded, and also with you. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a parable there. You know, sometimes we, the peop 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 we come to church, people of faith, seeking to follow Christ. We say to the world, we look out at the world, the chaos in the universities, the corruption in so many sectors of public service and government, the callousness of the corporate world sometimes. And we say, 
there's something wrong with the world. And then the world looks at us, <laughs> at our self-centeredness, our selfishness, our indifference, our apathy. And then the world says to us, and also with you, and also with you. And I want to suggest that that is most probably one of the greatest challenges facing the church at the moment. It's the challenge of credibility, of credibility. Are we credible? Are we really different in a good way to those who perhaps don't worship, don't follow Christ? Do our words and our actions come together? Do we walk the talk? Are we the real deal or not? And all I want to do today, and I, I do it with a lot of seriousness, I guess, today. All I want to do today is to offer you one word. Just one word. One word. And I, I believe that it's a word that Jesus offers us. It's a word that I think can help us overcome the credibility crisis that we're often part of. It's a word that I think can bring our beliefs and our behavior together. It's a word that can bring our doctrine and our doing together. It's a word that can bring our worship and our lives together. One word. It's the word turning, turning, turning. Now the biblical word for turn is repentance. I want you to get hold of that today. The biblical word for turning is repentance. And repentance is a theme that runs through the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we need to have some sense of what repentance, authentic repentance, is all about. It's not about self-condemnation. It's not about self-loathing. It's not so much about kind of beating, you know, beating our chests and saying how bad we are. While there is always a certain remorse in, in true repentance, essentially, repentance is about turning. It's about turning. Repentance is about turning our lives in God's direction. It's, it's, it's about turning. We, you know, so often we live in this kingdom of self where I am, you know, I will play God and I call the shots and it's about my will. And it's turning from that kingdom to another kingdom, God's kingdom. Where we, where we say to God, God, I want you really to be Lord in my life. I want your will to be absolutely primary in my living. That's repentance. It's this gradual turnaround in the way we think about life. The way we look at life. The way we relate to each other the way we live every day. I've been living with this word over the last few hours and days, and there's some things that have just become a little bit clearer to me, especially as I've looked at that reading in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And all I want to do today is I want to plumb the depths of repentance. What really is it? Because if there's one thing that can heal the credibility crisis in our lives... It's genuine repentance. 
So let me just share a few thoughts with you. And uh, as I share these thoughts with you, I really want you to know that I have wrestled very deeply with this. And there's a sense in which God has had to do a lot of work in my own life, uh, just as I've prepared. And I think the first thing that I want to say is this. When God calls us to repent, when Christ calls us to, re to repent, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. God is not threatening us. Christ is not threatening us. It's not a threat. It's an invitation. It's a wonderful, grace-filled invitation into something new for our life. Those words are gonna be up on the screen again. Jesus comes in, let me just take you back, comes in and he says to the people, the, the kingdom of God has drawn near. I'm bringing the kingdom to you. Now in simple Eastern English, Jesus is saying another kind of life is available. Your life, Trevor, doesn't have to be like this. There is something different that I bring to you. Another kind of life, life in the kingdom of God, life where God becomes real, life where I begin to change and become the person that God wants me to be, life in which I begin to experience the resources of God's adequacy and God's power on a moment by moment by moment basis. Jesus is saying, this kind of life is available. Now, repent. Turn. Step into it. <laughs> it's an invitation. It's a wonderful invitation. I need to confess, you know, for a long, long time, I had a very negative view of repentance. It was a word that threatened me. Whenever someone spoke about repentance, I had a mental picture that came into my mind. And it was always the picture of an elderly, I need to be careful, of an elderly man with a long coat holding a sign saying that repent for the end is near. <laughs> That's not the gospel. That's not what Jesus said. He, he said something totally different. The kingdom of God is near. Another kind of life is available. He wasn't threatening us. He was inviting us. Turn, turn, turn. I was on the highway the other day and I was behind a car. And I was thinking of what picture this driver had of repentance on the bumpers. It was turn or burn. <laughs> now, that's not what Jesus said. It's not what he said. The kingdom of God is available. Another kind of life is possible. And there's an invitation now to repent, to turn. Can I say, and, I'm, and maybe I'm saying this for one person here today, just one person. Can I say today that a new beginning is just one step away? A new beginning for your life is just one step away. And it's the step of repentance, of repentance. One step away. God comes to us in the mess and the muddle of our lives, comes to us in the sin and the destructiveness of our lives and says, another kind of life is possible. Repent. The second thing I want to say, and this is something that I really invite you to think about, can I suggest that repentance is not a once-off thing? It's not something that we tick and we say, done that, been there. Repentance is something that goes on 
day by day by day by day. I'm always turning. I'm always turning. And that's why in that little booklet that you've got that you follow each day, I use two words for repentance that mean a lot to me. Repentance is the doorway into new life with God. It's the first step we take. It's the first thing that Jesus said we need to do, turn, turn. It's the doorway into another kind of life with God. It can happen now. It happened for me walking down, and I've shared this many times with you, down a street in Port Elizabeth, a 16-year-old, struggling very deeply with my life, the meaning of my life, what I was going to live for. I'd never been to church in my life, never, never. I had met one person, a friend, who had told me about Christ, and he was credible. He was a credible witness. I believed him because his words and his life went together. And I wanted what he had as a 16-year-old. I could see something beautifully different in my friend's life. And he told me about Christ. And I remember walking down Havelock Street in the best city of South Africa, which you know is Port Elizabeth. And I just remember saying, Lord Jesus Christ, I, I just want to turn to you and give my life to you and I want to learn to start to follow you. But that wasn't the first time. I've discovered, I don't know if you've discovered this, but repentance is also the pathway by which we live each day with God because every day I discover stuff in my life that goes against God's way. I discover pockets of resistance to God Don't you? Pockets of selfishness, of self-centeredness. I discover attachments to security and to status and to reputation. I discover more and more of the stuff. And I've got to confess it. And then turn again to God so that my, my life with God can go deeper, become more real. That God can occupy more and more of my life and my soul and my mind and my body. And so it's an ongoing thing. It's a pathway. And every day we begin again. I don't know what you need to acknowledge today, maybe, in your life that blocks, that blocks your relationship with the Lord that makes you a witness that is not credible, not believable. And then people say about you and me, that person's not the real deal because there's a conflict. What is it? Maybe it's the way you treat your family. Maybe there's just a lovelessness, a self-centeredness. It's about me. It's not about anyone else. And maybe I need to confess that. And just turn to God in the midst of it so that God can get to work. Maybe it's a deception, just a secret way of life that I need to face up to and acknowledge and confess and just turn to God in the midst of so that God can begin to do something. Maybe it's a greed, I don't know, a racism. I have no idea. I have to deal with my stuff. What stops you from being a credible witness for Christ? And it can happen like that. I'll never forget once waking up, and Debbie, Debbie's the woman I married to, also got out of bed, and uh, she walked around the bottom of the bed. I'll never forget that moment. And she said, you know, Trevor, I had an insight last night while I was sleeping into my health, and I was just on my iPhone uh, just to check whether my soccer team had lost a game. And I was just checking, and then she said to me, Trevor, I'm not going to speak to you unless you put down that phone. So I said to her, well, then don't tell me. Now, in that moment, my credibility rating, no matter what I do on a Sunday, in that moment, my credibility rating falls. I'm not credible. 
And it was a moment of conviction. I just remember getting out of bed and just saying, God, I'm so sorry again. I've blown it again, again. And I turn, I ask you to help me just to re-engage. I remember following her into the other room and I said, okay, I put my iPhone down. What's the story? So it just happens each day, each day. Repentance is a doorway. It's also a pathway that we walk on day by day by day. Can I say one more thing? That repentance never stands alone. It never stands alone. It's always accompanied by a simple trust in the gospel. Go back to those words. They'll come up on the screen again. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is, it's near, it's near. And then, and then he says, repent. That's the one thing. And then he says, believe, believe the gospel. The two go together. As we turn to God, we believe the gospel. <laughs> We believe the gospel that we are really loved by God, that God is for us, not against us, and we believe that. We believe that we are accepted as we are, as we turn, like the prodigal son was accepted home, even though he was smelling of pigs. That we are forgiven, that we are forgiven, that Christ has done everything necessary for the slate to be wiped clean. I trust that. And so I turn, trusting the good news, trusting that God's available even for me, even for you, where we are in life. The picture that I have, and I end with this, the picture that always helps me to understand repentance and trust. We either live with clenched fists or open hands. With clenched fists, and we often live like this, with clenched fists we say no to God, no to what Christ has done, and I'm going to live my own way, God, and you stand back, and I want nothing to do with you. That's clenched fists. Or we can slowly open our clenched fists, two hands, the hand of repentance and the hand of trust. We turn and we trust. And as we turn and as we trust, again and again, we find our lives being caught up in the incredible, in the incredible life of the kingdom of God here and now. Let me end. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people kind of in the community around South Africa were to say, you know the people who go to Mosaic, they're not perfect. They're not, and they never will be. But they are people who live in an authentic repentance day by day by day. They're the real deal. They're credible. They're believable. And so today, friends, it's my privilege to invite you and to invite myself to turn. Oh God, we talk about deep things here on a Sunday. We try to find words, stumbling words to communicate something of the depths of your message. And we thank you so much that you that that you are available to each one of us, that your kingdom is available, that another kind of life is possible in the midst of our pain, our bewilderment, our confusion, our fear, in the midst even of our sin, 
you come to us. And you invite us to turn, trusting your goodness and your grace and your mercy, your deep love. And we pray today that today, today, will be a day of turning. This is our prayer. We offer it to you with all the love and all the longing and yearning of our hearts. And we say together as God's people, amen. May the joy of the risen Christ be with you. God bless, friends. God bless.